Today we will learn how to create a coronavirus like this, in Blender. This pandemic has taught us many good lessons, in real life. Similarly here as well, along with this virus, or the modeling part, we will also learn about some useful techniques, which can be used in many other places. So, this virus body has got two parts. One is this main body, that has also got many tiny particles scattered over it. And there are these red spikes, a bunch of proteins. Some of them even have a yellow color. So, let us start with a blank new file. Delete this default cube, and add an icosphere from the add menu. Open this little option toolbox. Change the subdivisions to 5, and also change the radius to 1.5. We are using an icosphere because all the faces for an icosphere are uniform in shape and size, which is not the case for UV sphere. We will first add a material for this. So go to the materials tab and create a new material. Then change the shader type to diffuse BSDF. Let us pick up some green color for this sphere. In order to see the color effect on our object, switch over to the rendered view mode. And also disable the world environment, so that Blender uses the default HDRI lighting for this scene. We can fine tune the green color with exact values. So, change the hue to 0.35. Saturation to 0.8. And the V to 0.1. We get a dark green color. This is our virus body, so you can probably rename it to something better. Say virus. We will now add several small particles all over this virus body. So, let us first hide this sphere. And then add one UV sphere from the add menu. We will treat this as a small particle, so resize it to 0.04. Just a little piece. Now go to the properties tab, and change the scale value in the Y dimension to 0.06. This will give us an ellipsoid shape for this small unit. Now, go to the object menu and apply all transformations. It is important to make its scale factors permanent. Now, add a new material for this object. Let us change the shader type to diffuse BSDF. And in the color, we can choose another shade of green. To fine tune this, enter 0.35 in the hue. Let the saturation be 0.8 and change this value to 0.25. Next, we will create several copies or instances of this sphere to populate over the surface area of the virus body. If we turn on the solid view mode, we can see numerous faces here, as we have used five levels of subdivisions while creating this sphere. We will place a copy of the tiny little sphere on each of these faces. But for that, we have to first prepare this sphere. So, go to the object properties. Scroll down below, and expand this section called Instancing. Turn on the Face option here. Now, if we bind any object to this sphere, through parent-child relation, Blender will create one instance of that object for each of these faces. We will do that later, let us first add some distortion, and some displacements to these faces, so that they look more random in nature. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Displacement modifier. We need a texture for this modifier, so go to the Texture tab. Create a new texture. Change the texture type to this one, called Stuckchi. Then scroll down. In the Noise Base, select either Voronoi F3, or you can take F4. And change the pattern to Wall Out. Then go back to the Modifiers tab. Reduce the Strength value to 0.2. Now, apply this modifier. We got some displacements added to our sphere. And for the distortions, please go to the edit mode. First, turn on the face selection mode. While all the faces are selected, go to the mesh menu, and under transform, select the option called randomize. It randomizes the orientation of the selected faces and the face normals. We can customize this tool from this option box. Let us change this amount value to 0.05. And we are done. So, go back to the object mode. Let us also switch over to the rendered view mode. We will now create instances of this tiny little sphere on all the visible faces of this object which is the virus body. While this little sphere is selected, press the shift key and click on this big sphere to select both of them and then press ctrl P to bring this menu. Now, select vertex. 
As a result, we get multiple instances of the tiny sphere created on all over the virus object. But they are all exactly same. Let us bring some color variations here. So split the screen into half, so that we can open the shader editor side by side. On this side, we have to select the original little sphere, in order to change the color, or the material of its instances. Let us now open the shader editor. If you are not familiar with shader editor, you can check my foundation level tutorials. Now, select this diffuse BSDF, and press Shift D to duplicate it. Open this color box, and change this value field, to 0.15. In order to mix these two colors together, go to the add menu, and add one mix shader, and place it in between the BSDF, and the material output node. After that, connect the two BSDF shaders, to the input side of the mix shader. Then go to the add menu, and add another node, called object info node. This has got one random output, which gives us a random number for each of the instances, of the object this material is applied to. And to use this, we also need to add a math node, from the converter menu. Let us place this node beside the object info node, and connect its random output to the input value of this math node. Also, change this function type, to greater than. So, we are checking if this random output is greater than the threshold, which is 0.5, and then it will return 1, otherwise it will return 0. We will use it as the mix factor, or FAC, so that the mix shader will use any one of the two BSDF nodes on its input. The result is immediately visible here. We got two different particles of different colors, at random, all around this object. So our virus body is ready, we need to now add the spikes. If you want, you can also turn on the bloom option, and expand this. For a better effect, change the threshold value to 0.1. Then change the radius to 3. And increase this intensity value to 0.1. It gives a soft glow around this object. Now, we will create the red spikes, and add them over this virus body. First, let us hide this virus altogether. We will start by adding a triangle here. So go to the Add menu, and add a circle. We can modify this circle, and convert it into a triangle. Simply open this option toolbox, and change the number of vertices to 3. We get a triangle here. Also, change the radius to 0 0.2. So, we have the base of our spike ready. Now, go to the edit mode. First turn on the vertex selection mode. With all the vertices selected here, go to the vertex menu, and select this option to create a new face for our triangle. Now, turn on the face selection mode. And under the face menu, select the extrude option, and move your mouse upward to extrude the object, up to some height like this. Click on your mouse to accept the change, and go to the bottom side. Select the bottom face, type S on your keyboard to resize, then move your mouse inward to scale it down, and accept it. Perfect! Our job is now complete here, so let us go back to the object mode. So we made a prism shape, as the overall structure of our spikes. We will now add some tiny little red cubes, on all its sides. But before that, we need to ensure that there are enough divisions. We can see that the object has one single face on each side, but we need to place multiple cubes to each face. So we need to make some subdivisions over here. To do that, go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to the Simple Type, increase the levels to 2, and then apply the modifier. We have got enough cuts, or sections on each face of our prism. So, let us turn on the rendered view mode, and now add a cube, which we will place on its surface. We have to resize it by a very small value, say, 0 0.03. Just a tiny little cube, for the spike protein cells. We will add a red material for this cube. So, go to the modifiers tab, and add a new material. Change the shader type, to diffuse BSDF. And in the color, pick up some nice red, or we can directly type, 0.005 for the hue and lower this value to 0.3 we get a nice red color but if you zoom you can see that the surface of this cube is very smooth and it is very shiny we need to add some bumps here to make it look more real as you already know all such modifications can be best done in the shader editor 
and the first thing that we need to add here, is a Voronoi texture node. And to connect it to the diffuse shader, we need to also add a bump node here. Okay, so increase the scale value to 50, and connect its distance output to the height input of the bump node. Reduce the bump strength to 0.5, and connect the normal to normal. We now get the uneven look, or bumps on the cube surface, exactly as we wanted. In the next step, we will create several instances of this cube, and place them on each section of this prism surface. To prepare the prism for the instances, go to the object properties and turn on the option for creating instances on the face. Now, select our red cube, press the shift key and select the prism, and then press ctrl P. Select vertex on this menu. So we got the cube instances created, and placed on each section of the prism. But they are very well organized, which looks completely artificial. We need to distort them, in order to have some random arrangement, that looks more real. So, carefully just select this prism alone, and go to the edit mode. Press A, to select all the faces, then go to the mesh menu, and under transform, select the option to randomize. To customize this effect, open the operator box, and change the amount to 0 0.05. Then change the uniform value to 0.5, and also increase the normal value to 0.5. Let us now go back to the object mode. The cubes are now jumbled up, with random orientation, which looks cool. While they are rightly placed at the top, the bottom part is not quite perfect, these cubes are overlapping with each other, as the prism has gradually become shorter in width towards the bottom. Ideally the cube should be proportional to the space available, and we can correct this through complex editing of the base prism, but there is a quick fix to make them proportional. If you go to the object instancing, there is an option called scale by face size. If you select this option, the cube size will follow the face area. But they need to be scaled up further, so increase this factor value, until it looks almost correct. Right now, we can see a good shape and size, with appropriate scaling for the prism, so let us accept this, and make it a whole number 14. Later, we will also see how to separate out the cube instances from their guiding object, so that we can remove the unnecessary prism from here. But for now, we can simply hide the prism by assigning a transparent material to it. Two more changes are needed. Change this blend mode to alpha blend and change the shadow mode to none. The prism is now invisible and we only have the cubes. The spike design is almost done, except that we also need few of these cubes to be in a different color. This is just to be true to the actual coronavirus body, where we have some membrane proteins along with the spike proteins. And for that, we need to first select the original cube object. This circle object is actually our spike. So, let us rename it to, Spike. Now, select this cube object. And, let us then go to our favorite shader editor. We need a variation in the color. So select this diffuse BSDF and press Shift D to duplicate it. Then change this red color to yellow. We will use the hue value as 0.06. The other values will remain as it is. No need to change. Now, to connect these two shaders, go to the Add menu, and add a Mix Shader node. Place it in between these two nodes, and connect the two color nodes, to the input side of this Mix Shader. We can see that it resulted into a pure mix of the two colors for all the cubes, but what we need is a selective coloring, some are to be red, and some are to be yellow. So add an Object Info node, just like before and also add a math node from the converter group. Then connect the random output of the object info to the input value of the math node, and we need to also change it to greater than. Right now it will divide the group in a 50-50 ratio. So we can change it to point 0.2 and connect this node to the FAC input of the mix shader. We now get roughly 20% of the cubes in the yellow color. It completely depends on your choice, Maybe we can reduce it further, to just 10% yellow, or a value of 0.1 here. This looks quite good. Let us then move to the next step. We will treat this spike as one object, and create an array of instances, of this spike, around the virus body. So, we have to add another icosphere here. 
We cannot use this original sphere for that purpose, because there are too many faces on this sphere. We need to place much lesser number of spikes around this virus. So we need a separate icosphere with lesser number of divisions. Simply add another icosphere from the add menu. We have to open this operator box. Now lower the subdivision levels to 2, and use a little higher value for the radius, 1.55. Then close this box. To create the instances, go to the object properties, and enable the instancing for the faces. And to randomize the face orientation like before, go to the edit mode. Then go to mesh, transform, and randomize. And open this operator box, to change the amount to 0.05, the other parameters are perfect. Let us now go back to the object mode. After that, select the spike object here, press shift key and click on this sphere to select it, press ctrl P, and select the vertex option. We got the spikes around the target object, but we don't want to keep this sphere visible in the background. So select this sphere, go to the materials tab, and select the same transparent material we had created earlier. It will hide our second icosphere. Everything looks perfect. Now, unhide the virus body. The coronavirus is now ready. But we are still left with the cleanup. We have to make these instances real, remove the extra parts, and club its bits and pieces into one single object, so that we can easily translate, or rotate, or animate this virus. In the next episode, we have discussed these techniques with the help of another similar virus model, with a focus on how to convert all these parts into one object together. You can check the same from the following links. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.